Good morning, students. Now, continuation of last work is as follows. In the last video, I had explained some numericals related to capacitors. Now, in today's module, we'll begin a new portion: electric resistance and Ohm's law. The beginning of the chapter is quite similar to what you had done in class ten, but as the chapter proceeds, you will come to know about more and more new topics. Now. Electric resistance and Ohm's law. This is basically here charge moves, and when charge moves, it forms current. And we are interested in finding the factors affecting the current. Okay, so the first part that we deal is electric current. I hope. The term electric current is not new for you all. You have studied the same in class ten. The rate of flow of charge is defined as current through the conductor, or you can say the rate of flow of charge through a wire gives the electric current through the conductor. I hope this point is clear to everyone. Now we know that I equal to Q by T. Current equal to Q is charge, T is time. So charge upon time. So the rate of flow of charge through a conductor is said to be electric current through that conductor. Formula I equal to Q by T. I hope you all know the SI unit of current is ampere, and that of charge is coulomb. So I can write one ampere equal to one coulomb upon one second. This further can be written as one C S minus one. Now, the current in a conductor is said to be one ampere when one coulomb charge flows in one second. I repeat, if one coulomb charge in flows in one second. Then the current is said to be one ampere. The one coulomb charge flows in one second. Hope you remember quantization of charge. We have studied Q equal to m e. From this, if we calculate number of electrons creating one coulomb of charge, then the answer was something like this: six point two five. Into ten to the power eighteen. We have done this in third chapter, and here I have already given how to get it. So six point two five into ten to the power eighteen electrons combinedly form one coulomb charge. So we can apply definition of one ampere. We can make a definition of one ampere using number of electrons as well. We can say one ampere also means six point two five into ten to the power eighteen. Electrons flowing per second. So, if this much number of electrons—it's not small; it's quite big. If this much number of electrons flows in one second, the current is said to be one ampere. I hope the definition of one ampere is clear to everyone. In general, I equal to Q by T, charge upon time. If one coulomb charge flows in one second, the current is said to be one ampere. So, one ampere equal to one CS minus one. Since one coulomb of charge is uh, the combination of 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons, therefore we can say that one ampere current is 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 electrons per second. When this much number of electrons flows in one second, the current is said to be one ampere. Now, current is a scalar quantity. Here, the next topic that we deal is current density. Current density. I'm giving the mathematical expression first, then I'll give the definition for the sign. Current density is denoted by J, small J. And it is equal to I upon A. 
current density at a point in a conductor is defined as the current through the conductor at that point to the area of cross section of the same point. What we'll do? We'll take the amount of current passing through a particular point and we'll check the area of cross section of the wire at that point itself. So, current density J is the ratio. First of all, current density is the property of a point in a conductor and not of the entire conductor. I repeat, current density is the property of a point in a conductor and not of the entire conductor. So, our divine current density at a point is defined as the current flowing through the conductor at the point at a point to the area of cross section of the conductor at that point. So, J equal to I upon A. Further, current density is a vector quantity. Its direction is same as direction of motion of positive charge or direction of current. Try to remember, current density is a vector quantity and its direction is same as direction of motion of positive charge or the direction of current. So, SI unit of current density using this particular expression can be ampere per meter square or a m minus 2 and using the same we can write dimension of current density that is a l minus 2. So what important point that you have to remember current is a scalar quantity but current density is a vector. Its direction is same as direction of current or direction of motion of positive charge. Current density is the property of a point in a conductor and not of the entire conductor. I repeat, current density is the property of a point in a conductor and not of the entire conductor. I hope these two topics are clear to everyone, current and current density. I hope I can move ahead. Now, the next, next topic is mechanism of flow of current through a conductor. How we can explain the motion of current through a conductor? Here we use free electron bottle. Listen very carefully. It's just one para. Listen very carefully. Now, the electronic conduction can be explained with the help of free electron theory or the current through a conductor can be explained with the help of free electron theory. Now we all know that. Material consists of atoms. An atom consists of electrons, protons and neutrons. Protons and neutrons stays within the nucleus. On the other hand, electrons are revolving around. Now, some electrons are quite close to the nucleus. Hence, they are under strong electrostatic attraction. While some electrons are at large distance from the nucleus. Now, those which are at large distance, they are under less attractive force. If somehow this outer electron gets energy, then the electron leaves the atom and becomes free to move in the vacant spaces between the atoms of the conductor. So the electron becomes free. Now the atom which loses electron becomes positive ion. So we can say a conductor consists of Free electrons and equal number of stationary positive ions. Now these electrons can move about within the conductor. Here, in general, for a conductor, the number of free electrons is 10 to the power 29 per meter cube. If we take 1 meter cube volume of a conductor, then the approximate number of electrons is 10 to the power 29. The approximate number of free electrons is 10 to the power 29. We call it as free electron density or number of electrons per unit volume. Try to remember this particular number. So, try to remember the idea behind electronic conduction or current through a conductor is free electrons. 
present within the conductor and the number of electrons is this silver is the best conductor because silver has the maximum number of free electrons per unit volume now electronic conduction not only takes place in conductors or solids it may occur in liquids as well for example electrolytes in chemistry you have studied electrolyte basically consists of ions which are plus as well as minus now when we apply potential difference then both the ions move plus and minus both ions move and they will constitute the current so in metals the current is only due to the motion of free electrons on the other hand in electrolytes or in liquids the electronic conduction or the current is due to the flow of ions which are both positive as well as negative try to remember these important points i will continue in my next video